Microsoft is widening the net for businesses wanting to use holographic computing to transform how they operate. As of March, when the company started shipping HoloLens headsets, developers had to apply to use the technology. But now, anyone based in the US and Canada can buy up to five HoloLens units at $3,000 each. Unlike virtual reality and augmented reality, with HoloLens, Microsoft offer a mixed reality experience, in which holographic objects are pinned to specific physical locations or objects in the real world. While Microsoft won't disclose the number of developers now working on the platform, current commercial partnerships include those with companies like Volvo, not only is the car company using HoloLens to further developments in sensors, Volvo also sees holographic computing as a way of selling cars by getting potential customers hands-on with the vehicles. HoloLens is also helping to improve communication in product development. In working with software company Autodesk, designers and engineers can more closely collaborate on projects in real time. Microsoft faces a tough challenge in creating an entirely new platform, though, but it'll be banking on its history as a tech leader and its long-standing relationships with developers will help. Another area experimenting with HoloLens is education. Case Western Reserve University is using the technology to better inform medical students, for example, learning how cardiac anatomy works giving them a view of a heart that couldn't be achieved with a real heart. While Microsoft won't say when HoloLens will hit the consumer market, it says that this is just the beginning, that HoloLens is on a multi-year journey and that it's focused on developers and enterprise scenarios. An update on that breaking news coming to us out of India, where at least 12 people at a busy marketplace have been killed in the northeastern state of Assam. It happened in the town of Kokrajar. Now, the gun gunman fired indiscriminately and through hand grenades at the crowded market. The security forces killed the gunman, uh, one assailant, sorry, and are pursuing another three. <laughs> In its attempts to reduce populations of mosquitoes in America that carry the Zika virus, the United States has taken another step forward in the process of planning a trial of allowing genetically modified mosquitoes to roam Florida. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration said Friday that a field trial testing the genetically engineered mosquitoes would not impact the environment significantly. Intrexon's OxyTech unit has been working for years to kick off a trial of the mosquitoes in the Florida Keys in attempts to eventually reduce the number of mosquitoes that carry diseases. FDA, the approval of GMO mosquito testing to fight Zika. This comes just a day after the head of the CDC visited South Florida. But will this help in the fight. Our chief investigator Michelle Gillen has more on this controversial issue. With South Florida ground zero in an outbreak of Zika, just hours after the government brain trust behind the battle left town, the Food and Drug Administration announcing today its approval of a field test of genetically modified mosquitoes to help combat the virus. In the Zika zone, Southern Florida officials are trying to protect people from those in those planes. Rather, Boston researchers may have found the most effective way, though, to stop the virus. A new vaccine developed here showing very positive results. WBZ's Katie Brace is live outside of Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital tonight. And Katie, the bad news here, it could be years before it's ready. But David, researchers here at Beth Israel are really on the front lines when it comes to finding a Zika vaccine. And they say they have a promising vaccine with no side effects. We were able to make 
rapid contributions. Promise in the lab at Beth Israel, working in partnership with Walter Reed Army Institute, researchers developed three experimental Zika vaccines that proved successful in rhesus monkeys. Dr. Dan Baruch leads the research. In the vaccinated animals, there was no sign of virus. So we were very excited about these results. Senator Ed Markey toured the lab and expressed his excitement. Well, that's a very optimistic finding. And now they need to do the test in human beings. He called for government funding of Zika research as fears grow over the disease, especially for pregnant women. They're concerned at greatest risk because of birth defects. Plane started aerial spraying in Miami's Zika zone, where 15 people have contracted the disease. There is controversy over the insecticide used. The dose is so low and so fine a mist that it's almost impossible, not totally impossible, but almost impossible for any human to have any significant effect in the way that they're spraying and at the heights that, they're, that it's being sprayed. Crews are also ground spraying. With concern of the Zika virus continuing spread, the focus remains on a vaccine. According to Taiwan Center for Disease Control, the woman showed no symptoms when she passed through customs on July 24th. A few days later, though, early symptoms, including fever, nausea, were seen. Now, doctors confirmed the infection. Authorities say the woman was asked to stay home for treatment, but no prohibitive quarantine measures were taken. They say her condition has now improved. And this is the first case in Taiwan that involves a local resident. The previous cases were from Thailand and Indonesia. In Guizhou province, houses collapsed. The first floor of Feng Hong Middle School in Sandu County is inundated. This was a damage brought about by Typhoon Nida. It hit south in China on Tuesday, bringing more than 200 millimeters of rainfall to the area. The rainstorm also caused waterlogged and disrupted traffic in several national and provincial highways. China National Highway 320 in Yunnan province was cut off by landslides and mud rock flows. 26 people who were trapped in there have since been rescued. In Changji, Hui Autonomous Prefecture of northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, firefighters had to rescue two people trapped in the car by a flood in a riverway. The car started drifting in the water and I turned the steering wheel instinctively, but the car was still washed away. I was afraid the water was too deep and it would turn over, so I backed the car close to the bank. Shanghai was also hit by thunderstorms on Thursday, but the rain managed to cool the city tortured by severe heat in the past week. There are mainly short showers or thunderstorms in Shanghai, and there is no extreme high temperature for the moment. Several counties in Handan City, Hebei province on Wednesday night issued a red rainstorm alert, the highest in China's four-color warning system. The region was previously hit by heavy rain on July the 19th, and many projects damaged by floods have not been repaired yet. Demonstrators tearing apart and burning the Brazilian flag, fighting with police in the streets, with at least two people detained. Riot police late Friday blasting smoke grenades into this crowd of protesters, then charging. The tear gas billowing in yellow clouds. Medical personnel quickly setting up a makeshift triage unit, tending to those overcome by the gas and the smoke. The protesters trying to make their way to the Maracanã Stadium barely an hour before the opening ceremony. But they were flanked by an army of security personnel. Soldiers patrolling the streets, armored cars straddling the medians, and motorcycle cops careening down avenues. This protest planned against Brazil's vast spending during these Olympics and its allegedly vast corruption. These riot police outnumber protesters here by about three or four to one. There's obviously an enormous impetus here by Olympic organizers to ensure that everything goes smoothly and peacefully. It all started early on Friday morning with the first action of the Black Lives Matter Day of Action dubbed a national shutdown. Protesters wanted to highlight state oppression, rising racism and stand in solidarity with victims of police violence. 
Not everyone is happy about the growing prominence of the Black Lives Matter movement in the United Kingdom. They argue that it's divisive and counterproductive. But if you ask anyone who's lost a family member or a friend to state violence, they will tell you that it's needed more than ever and that the entire country has to wake up to the reality of Britain's underlying race. Uh, of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? <laughs> The federal government doesn't run the election process. President Obama now pledging to rig the voting machines for Hillary Clinton under the guise of protecting against cyber threats. Yes, you heard me correctly. Julie Davis over at the New York Times is reporting that the Obama administration is weighing new steps to bolster the security of the United States voting process against cyber threats including whether to designate the electronic ballot casting system for November's elections as critical infrastructure. Yes, that is according to Jay Johnson, who is the Secretary of Homeland Security, who issued the statement on Wednesday. They state that in the wake of the hacks that infiltrated the Democratic campaign computer systems, Johnson said he was conducting high-level discussions about election cybersecurity. They state a vastly complex effort given that there are 9,000 jurisdictions in the United States that have a hand in carrying out the balloting, many of them with different ways of collecting, tallying, and reporting votes. Quote, we should carefully consider whether our, electronic, our election system, our election process is critical infrastructure, like the financial sector, like the power grid. Just Volvo. Not only is the car company using HoloLens to further developments in sensors, Volvo also sees holographic computing as a way of selling cars by getting potential customers hands-on with the vehicles. HoloLens is also helping to improve communication in product development. In working with software company Autodesk, designers and engineers can more closely collaborate on projects in real time. Microsoft faces a tough challenge in creating an entirely new platform, though. But it'll be banking on its history as a tech march. When the company started shipping HoloLens headsets, developers had to apply to use the technology. But now, anyone based in the US and Canada can buy up to five HoloLens units at $3,000 each. Unlike virtual reality and augmented reality, with HoloLens... Microsoft is widening the net for businesses wanting to use holographic computing to transform how they operate. As of Microsoft offer a mixed reality experience, in which holographic objects are pinned to specific physical locations or objects in the real world. While Microsoft won't disclose the number of developers now working on the platform, current commercial partnerships include those with companies like...